Good morning. Good morning. Greetings to one and all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here today, and we've come to give honor and glory to God. I want to uh, say thank you to those who are watching by television and internet. Uh, this is the First United Methodist Church in Titusville, Pennsylvania. I'm Ron Hipwell, and we're glad you're here too. Uh, also, if you're a first-time visitor, we want to make sure that you know after the service that as you go along the hallway there in the narthex, uh, there are gifts available at the welcome table. Please uh, take advantage of that. We'd love to have you have it. I'm holding the registration folder. The red ones will look like this. Please uh, fill them in now and pass them along. And also, if you have a prayer concern, we do have a number of concerns I know of already, but if you have a prayer concern, please fill in the prayer cards that are in the pew racks in front of you, and they will be collected during the first hymn. Hi, Jerome. Good morning. Good morning. I have an announcement to make this coming Saturday, 9 to noon. We have a car wash. Um, it's raining today to get them washed off, but they'll be dirty again by Saturday. So, um, yeah, 9 to noon, Larry's Auto car wash. Um, this will be to support the mission team heading to Daytona this summer, end of June. So come out and uh, we'll wash your car if you can make it. Thanks. All right, let's celebrate the fact that uh, we uh, have life and love in Jesus Christ and we get to share that with one another. Will you rise please and greet each other? <laughs> all please join me in the reading of the call to worship. It's from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Nope. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.
join me in prayer? God, thank you so much for this day that you've given us and this time that we have to come together as Christians and believers in you. And God, I ask that you would please bless this time and um, just give us the focus to set aside the things in our lives, God, that are challenging us or distracting us from you, God, and that um, we would be able to commit our minds and commit our hearts to you in this time um, and really come away from today just loving you more and knowing more about you. We thank you so much for everything that you've done in our lives, God, and the miracle of your salvation for us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. And now all of you who gave applause at the end of that understand that what they sang about was a question. Who will be a witness for my Lord? And if you applaud, I'm assuming you're saying, that's me, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. Very good. Hey, uh, it's time for the children to come forward and join me. I invite them to come at this time, please.
Well, this morning I want to talk to you about something that's a little bit hard to understand. It's hard even for me, and you'll, but let me start by bringing out <coughs> of my bag this. Now, can anybody tell me what this is? What? I, I have people who are participating who aren't even here. <laughs> All right, anybody tell me what this is? Yep, Chauncey? A plant. A plant? Mm hmm. Anybody else have another? A pine? Yeah. Another name for pine is? Mm -hmm. White pine. White, white pine? Yeah, I know that's another name. I'm kidding you. But th what color does this one look? Green. Very good. All right, sorry, Maria. That, they are different. Kind, there's blue spruce and all those kinds of things. But anyway, I wanted you to notice this because sometimes we call these things evergreens, all of those kinds of trees. Actually, this is a part of a tree. It's not a plant. And I, I went, I'm not going to tell you where I cut this from, but... Uh, after a while, this is not going to be evergreen. Okay, but here, you know, why we, we say it's ever, why do we call these evergreens and evergreen? Why do we call them evergreens? Uh -huh. They don't die in winter. Yeah, in wintertime, they don't lose the leaves and they stay green except when they're covered by the white snow, right? All right, um, so anyway, so they're green all the time. Well, what I wanted to talk to you about today is eternity, being eternal. Now, you know, we usually think of time with seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and years. And, and, and even for somebody like myself, I'm about to retire, I'm 64 years old. That may seem like eternity to you, but it's going to go really fast. So we're not evergreen like this. But you know, these things, every year we see them, they look the same year in and year out. They grow a little bit of extra stuff, but they look the same. But you know, even plants die. But God has told us that what Jesus did for you and for me on the cross, when we believe in him, he promises us ever our eternal life. That it's not just you know, kind of year after year and really nice that a tree looks evergreen, but we can be, have eternal life with God in Jesus Christ. So that's really good news. And I know you're really young and all this seems like it's a way far off, but how wonderful the promise is of God that we can have the hope and the promise of eternal life right now. So let's pray about that. Lord, thank you so very much for the simple reminder of something that's green all the time. Um, but we thank you that your love for us is without fail and that you offer us eternal life through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for these young people that they might know that promise, that certainty in their hearts and that we would trust you to do the very things you said you would do. Bless them and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Miss Lisa's over there, and if you're going to junior church, you can follow her. Otherwise, back to your mom and dad. And this is the opportunity for all of us to express our gratitude and thanks to God by the giving, giving of our tithes and our offerings. And I'm grateful that my friend Bob Heinemann is going to share with us a message and song as we share in this time of the offerings. Ushers. I chose this one, I like it a lot. So no matter what you're going through, there is hope. You 
will rise.
Our dear gracious Father, we give thanks to you that because Jesus lives, we too shall live. Thank you for the reminder of this beautiful song that, that no matter what we've been going through, uh, that with you in us, we can rise and be strong. And, and so, Lord, we give back to you with gratitude these gifts today. Please bless all that we do together. Uh, that we, not only with these monies, but with our spiritual gifts combined together, that we can fulfill the mission to which you call us faithfully, and that we can be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Are you still amazed by grace? How great it is to sing that wonderful hymn of the faith and be reminded of the free gift that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, God's grace is amazing. Well, it says prayer concerns, and this is a bunch of them, so let's get to them. Um, this morning, we're praying for the extended Onley family. Uh, Glenn Ongley uh, is in St. Vincent's Hospital right now in Erie with congestive heart failure. Don't know the extent of that, but um, um, please uh, be in prayer for him. His mom and Lynn's mom as well uh, is in the Titusville Hospital with gallbladder issues. As she 
having it out, that's the only thing I'm not sure. Anyway, she has gallbladder issues, so please remember Elaine Ongley. And Marilyn Glenn's wife is out west uh, because her sister has terminal cancer, and so she is with her. Also, we're praying for Nancy Warden. As you know, she wasn't in the choir this morning. She uh, had heart issues. She is also in St. Vincent's. Uh, also praying for Mary Alice Lufer, who is in St. Vincent. Bill was in the early service. Bless his heart. I'm um, going back up to see her, but she had colon surgery this week, and Bill tells me it's like she didn't have surgery. She's doing really, really well, so we're very grateful to get that good word. Uh, also, we're praying for um, Reverend Terry Bidwell and his family and the Steffi family with the loss of the son Robert, so please do remember to pray for them. Uh, also for Amy, who is experiencing depression, uh, praying for Stephen and Aaron. Also for um, Corey and Christy, praying for the camping season. And for the Armstrong family, praying for Kevin and Jennifer and family, a return trip from Okinawa. Also we're praying for Rachel, who needs guidance, and uh, Marge, who is having heart surgery and a tumor. Also praying for a family, church family, uh, parents. Uh, also praying for safe travels and the Lord's help. Uh, apparently Mike Wheeling is having more back and leg issues, so please remember to pray for Mike. Praying, praying for the Chip Drake family, Carol and, and Chip, and Kip still needs that, that kidney, so we need to get busy and Pray for this miracle. We've been waiting a long time for that. Praying for Marcia's family, Fran, Diane, Dwayne, Kelsey, Bo, uh, Glenn, and Meryl Nongley. Again, for Bonnie, Bill, and Linda. Praying for Dan, who is going to be having another shock treatment on his heart this coming Wednesday, correct? And I pray that that would be successful. Uh, also, praying for Dan, Pat, Anna, Janet, Jean, and again, Chip and Carol, praying for Tammy Carruther, who is in the ER uh, right now. Also praying for a family and safe travels, Tammy Snyders, uh, Sophia, Ann Palmer, Adam Gallagher, Leona Lloyd, Rhonda Brown and family, and for Pam. Let's unite our hearts together as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear gracious Father, there are times where we feel so small, where we feel so inadequate, where we can feel overwhelmed and, and just overcome with uh, anguish and anxiety over all of the concerns that we face or that our family faces or friends face. Lord, as we as a congregation are gathered here in this place, uh, today, we could easily be burdened over and over again with all the concerns that we have just heard together. But as, Lord, we, we sit here, as we stand here, as we worship, we want, we want to renew our trust that you are God, that you are on the throne, and, and that indeed, as your word invites us, we want to cast to roll upon you all of our anxieties, all of our concerns. And so, Lord, we lift these cards before you today. And there are so many different kinds of needs. There are people who are in emergency situations at the present time. There are those who are faced with issues with their heart. There are those who are struggling with cancer. There are those who just have family issues and need your, your intervention. But Lord, we pray for your healing wherever it is needed today. And, and Lord, as we've been singing and celebrating today, we are amazed by your grace. We know that we're undeserving. We know that we're sinful, that we're rebellious, that we've gone against your holy standard. We've gone against your word. We've sometimes just forgotten about who you are. And thank you that in your mercy you have reached out to us through your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that indeed you have sent him and and others in his name to be witnesses that we could hear your good news. But Lord, we pray that 
even today we can celebrate this good news. Open our minds and hearts to your word. We give thanks to you for the promises that are there. And we praise you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. Well, friends, we've been in a series of messages for a little over, maybe around two months on from 1 John. And we haven't been able to hit everything I wish we could have, but, but we have been in the series that you may know. And you're going to hear those words repeated again today, so stay tuned. But today we're looking at that you may know that you may have eternal life. Do you know? That you may have eternal life. Do you understand that? Well, listen carefully to these words. These are, are really basic words in some respects about the Christian life. They're words that many of us have heard over and over again. But, but for those of us who have heard them, let it be a celebration today of what God has done for us. But perhaps some of you will, for the very first time, kind of understand something that you didn't know was possible. So here are the words from 1 John 5, 11 to 13. There they come. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so, notice these words, that you may know that you have eternal life. Wow. These are amazing words. Well, let me tell you about um, an elderly couple. Um, this is not Bonnie and Ron, but, 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 um, but let me tell you about that. This couple was about 85 years of age, and, and uh, they were generally at this particular point when I want to tell you the story in good health, largely because for the last number of years, the wife had really stressed good eating and, and exercise, and so they'd been really disciplined about those things. But, but they were killed in a car accident and found themselves in heaven with St. Peter. And, and when they get there, uh, there they are uh, before Peter, and he shows them the mansion that is going to be theirs. And, and they're really excited to go in and see, you know, that there's a beautiful uh, master suite, there's a wonderful kitchen, there's a jacuzzi. You know, I mean, it couldn't be any better than it is. And they're thrilled about being there. But the, the elderly gentleman had been frugal during his lifetime, and so he says, St. Pete, this is great, but, but how much is all this going to cost? But St. Peter says, you don't get it. This is heaven. It's free. It's all yours and it's free. Well, they, they, they leave, you know, the mansion. He takes them around for more of the tour of heaven and they, they go out to this beautiful golf course. And he, they, you know, the older guy loved golf and so there it is, you know, and he's feeling good. He's going to get to play golf. And, and, and St. Peter says, yes, you can play this. And every week or so, that it changes completely so it matches the best golf courses you've ever played in the world and, and, and but it's yours and, and the guy says yeah but what are the green fees what am I have to pay to play golf and St. Peter says no 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 you don't understand this is heaven it's free and, and, and so this is all good but then they leave the golf course and they go into the clubhouse and the old guy's eyes get really big because he sees this amazing buffet of food that goes on and on and on and and it looks really good, and it smells just as good. And, 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 but then the guy says, you know, what's this going to set me back to eat at this buffet? And St. Peter's getting a little exasperated because you know what he said. He says, you don't get it. This is heaven. It's free. But then the old guy had one more question. He says, could you tell me, please, where the low-fat and low-cholesterol tables are? Because I know she's going to want me to eat there. St. Pete said, that's the best part. This is heaven. It's, it's free. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat as much as you want. You'll never get fat. You'll never get sick. Well, at that, 
This old guy standing there with St. Peter and his wife took his hat off, he threw it down, he stomped on it, and he goes into a tantrum like a little boy in a, in a grocery store or Walmart might do, and he just seems out of control, and St. Pete's trying to calm him down, his wife's trying to calm him down, they're trying to find out what is particularly wrong with him, and he says, he says to his wife, this is all your fault. He said, if it weren't for those blasted brand muffins and eating healthy and exercise, we could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> well, it's all free. What we read about today, uh, the, the, the joke setting that aside, but, but the reality is that God's promise of heaven, promise of eternity, promise of eternal life that is in Jesus Christ is free. Now, before we confuse that, remember that Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. Can't lose sight of that. But nevertheless, we just sang what? Amazing Grace, amazing grace. And that's why it is a sweet sound to know that God offers freely through Jesus Christ this amazing gift. Well, we're going to talk today about truths, actually three truths about eternal life. So bear with me. But, but when we move toward the end, you're going to have an opportunity to respond to, to what these truths are. And so stay tuned. But we're going to be looking at truths about eternal life. And so we need to look at what they are so we understand just how amazing all of this is. And the first thing that I see in this passage, we, we can review again verse 11, but, but the availability of eternal life. So, you know, it's not quite like this, but just imagine it's like this. If somebody came to you and, and pulled out of their pocket a free ticket and they guaranteed that this free ticket would get you into heaven. Um, you would take that ticket, wouldn't you? I mean, if, you know, if, there was, if it was offered to you, who wouldn't? And there are people that don't say they don't believe this stuff. There are people that have been rebelling all their lives. But, but all of a sudden, if they came along and there was the guarantee made available to them to take this ticket, I'm sure everyone would take that, heaven, or that ticket for heaven. Well... I want to talk to you about the availability, what God makes available, what God offers. It's, it's not a ticket, but it comes in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so listen carefully to these words. These are so simple and yet so powerful what they say. Verse 11 from 1 John 5, and this is the testimony. And it's God's testimony. We'll come back to that in a minute. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. And, and so you've got to understand these words. We all need to understand these. It's, they're wonderful promises. But try to envision this. If you imagine a courtroom for just a moment, that, that will, will be a good way to think about this. Because, you see... Um, the word testimony that was in that verse, verse 11, it is a legal term. And it comes from the courtroom kind of language. And it can be translated as testimony, even as witness or, or record. So the King James, this verse uh, in King James said, and this is the record that God has given, God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. New living puts it slightly different way, but says, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. But regardless of the translation, we understand it. It's, it's like God Himself was in the courtroom testifying, guaranteeing this is what is available. What is available to us is eternal life. Did you get that? That God's guaranteeing, He's testifying, it's His record, it's His witness. How strong is that term that He's giving us eternal life? That life is in His Son. Now, let me change the, the, the image here for just a moment. I want you to think about like a, a grocery store. I, 
Many of you who have traveled outside of the United States will be able to appreciate this a, a, a little bit more than maybe those who haven't. But, but here in the United States, one of the things that when we've been out of the country and come back that always impresses us is the kinds of things that we have available to us in our grocery stores. Even, even in a small community like Titusville, just about anything you want year round is available. But, but some of those things that are seasonal that, that are there are a lot more costly because of the shipping. But we have, we can get things. They're available to us. And it's just amazing how, how easy it is if we have the money. Of course, again, notice we have to pay for those things that are available to us. But those people who live in other parts in the world, you know, many times the, their resources, they have very limited selection and some of the things they might most like to have aren't available. Um, and people in, in years gone by were only able to eat what they were able to grow or what they had available to them. Uh, or maybe in a small market, they might have some things at some points during the year. But notice what this passage tells us, that God gives eternal life. We need to understand it's not just available in years gone by. It is the, the sense of the word that is here is when God gives it, it's always available. God's eternal life is available as much right now as it was when Jesus died on the cross. And when the early church was able to announce that this is God's record, that he gives us eternal life, this life is available to us, the eternal life that God promises us. So, it is a wonderful free gift in Him. Before we look at this verse, um, but let me also say just a little bit more about this idea that God gives us eternal life. When we believe, as the passage tells us, when we believe in Jesus Christ, the eternal life that God talks about begins at the moment that we trust in Jesus and continues through all eternity. But we also need to remember that, that it depends not on who we are or the things that we have done or not done, but it depends completely and only on who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us by his death on the cross. He alone was, was capable because he alone was without sin. He, he alone is fully human and fully God. And he died the death that we deserve uh, and took our sin on the cross. And so here in Romans, notice there are two sides to this verse. Just try to picture it. On the one side, it says, for the wages of sin is death. And so that it reminds us that the payment for our disobedience, our sin before God, is a spiritual death that separates us from God for all eternity. So that the hope for eternal life because of sin dies. However, that's the one side. There is another side to this verse that says, but in, in spite of all that's just been said, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What great hope there is in, in that transition from one half of the verse to the second half. In, in John chapter 6 verse 40, we find these words, for my Father's will is that everyone, not just some, but everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise Him up at the last day. Everyone, everyone who believes in Him has the promise of eternal life. Well, that was the first truth, that it's available. Do we, do we realize that? that? That even right now, right today, even right here in Titusville, in this worship service, God is giving eternal life. It's available to us. But also think about uh, the next truth, and that is the acceptance of eternal life. We're going to look at verse 12, and you, you see this picture. It might look like Valentine's you know, box of chocolates. But the idea is think of a gift. And God's gift is a gift of love for us. And that's what I want us to think about, the acceptance of that, that gift. Now, before I read the verse, 
let, let me put it like this. If, if I'm presenting a gift to Bonnie, then I paid the price for that gift, and it's a gift of love, and I want to give that gift to her. What does she have to do to receive the gift? Well, well I can make it available, but it's not hers until she takes it, until she accepts the gift, until she receives it from me. So I can be extending it to her, but, you know, she might not take it now. Thank you that you do. But, but So what do we have to do to accept God's gift? Do we understand that? It's God's given, we're told, in verse 11. God gives us eternal life. But the gift needs to be accepted. It's not ours until we receive it. So listen to how it goes here in verse 12. He who has the Son has what? Life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Pretty simple, isn't it? He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do we accept God's gift in the person of Jesus Christ? If we, we believe in Him and what He's done for us, if we trust in Him and accept Him into our lives, we are told we have this eternal life that God has promised. And it's based entirely on who Jesus Christ is, not on ourselves. So there is the key. The, the acceptance of the gift is the acceptance of the person of Jesus Christ through faith uh, in Him. So... Uh, the, the image that's on the screen, I was grateful when I found it because I think it illustrates pretty well. But, but let's say that someone is drowning in, in the ocean. They're so far out, they, they know that they cannot possibly swim to the shore. They can't save themselves. Maybe they're out there floundering and, and can't, even, can't even swim. But if someone comes along and throws out you know, a life preserver, uh, throws that out to them, who is out there drowning and dying would not take it as, as the way of safety. Well, of course somebody who's drowning would, would want to have uh, that possibility of being saved. Now, this is a double image because it also illustrates the cross there. And that the idea is for us to remember that, that God has done that for us. We Remember, the, for the wages of sin is death. We've been dying apart from God, but God gives us a life preserver through Jesus Christ. He, he makes available through who Christ is and what he's done for us the possibility uh, of having life in him. John chapter 3, verse 36, this is the last verse in John 3, it says this, whoever believes in the Son, notice, has eternal life. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. So do you understand the picture here is that, that for those who say no to Jesus Christ, God's punishment, God's wrath is still against sin. It does not change. If, if we re reject God's gift... God's wrath remains on us. But for those who believe in the Son, for those who accept the gift, those who trust in Jesus Christ, we're promised that the gift is ours. And what a wonderful promise and hope there is for us in Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of books that you read, right from the get-go, you, you understand the purpose of the book. But in John's Gospel, I'm not saying you don't understand it at the beginning, but, but John's Gospel reveals the purpose of the gospel at near the end rather than at the beginning. And one of the special features about John's gospel, John's gospel, if you read it, is that uh, seven miracles or signs, as John calls them, are presented throughout the story. Now, he tells us that there are many more things than these, but, but he gives seven of them as illustrations of the power of Jesus Christ, of who he is and what he is able to do. And, and then he gets to the end and he says these words. He says, but these are written, all the things about Jesus Christ, all he was, all he had done up to that point. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. 
Why did Jesus come? Why, why, why is the gospel good news? Why was the gospel written? So that we would know that by believing in Jesus Christ, that we may have life in his name. God wants us to know that we have life in Jesus Christ. So there's another truth that we can't miss here. And that is the assurance of eternal life. Now, I'm not sure why we do this, but, but, and, but I put the illustration up there just to kind of get us moving on this. But, but we usually say that owls are wise. Now, I'm not sure they're smarter than any other bird. But, 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 you know, we make that analogy, don't we? You know, we all understand, you know, we talk about owls being wise. And, and so we, we think of them as knowing stuff. <laughs> you know, somebody who is wise knows something. Well, well when this passage, we're going to find out as we look at verse 13 that we can know, we can be wise in God and wise in this truth. Uh, that's what God desires for us in Jesus Christ. And verse 13 says this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. I know that for many of us this is something we've understood for most of our Christian life because we're talking about things at the beginning. But, but, but John wrote this to the church. He wanted to remind them because there were a lot of people who were kind of nervous in the service. There were people that think we're still thinking after a long time that it depended on them and not God. And, and so, but he wrote these things to remind them that if we believe, when we believe in the name of the Son of God, that we may know that we have eternal life. We can have the assurance, the guarantee from God of life in Jesus Christ. You remember of course, Ben Franklin, one of the most famous figures in American history. And in 1789, it was attributed to him that he said, nothing is certain but death and taxes. See, it's a part of our culture. We, we remember not him saying, because I don't think any of us were around then, not even myself, but, 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 but we remember because that's a part of our culture that nothing is certain but death and taxes. Now, Ben Franklin was a pretty wise man, and I'm sure he actually believed more than that, but, but the way many of us feel about our culture, these are the certainties. But, but there is something else that's certain as well. And we need to recognize through these words that, that John was writing certainties, the certainty of eternal life. The certainty of eternal life in Jesus Christ. The certainty when we believe in the name of the Son of God that we have life in Him. He's writing of certainties. Now, this picture is a little bit more bizarre. But, but bear with me for a couple of moments because I got to thinking about this story uh, just a, f well, not even that long ago on May 16th, 2015, this year, earlier this month. A sports legend by the name of Dean Potter was killed. And he was known as a base jumper. And you probably can't see the word, but if you take a look at right up in the corner there, it says squirrel on the suit. Those were called squirrel suits. Now that ought to tell you something. You know, we are not squirrels. All right, we understand that we're not squirrels. But we may, well, no, I won't go there. Okay, so anyway, uh, this guy was a base jumper, and he was well known for daredevil acts of jumping off places, but I think it was in Yosemite National Park, which is illegal to do this, but he did it anyway. But, but he and a friend did one of these base jumps. No one knows exactly what happened, but they were killed. They were found later, and, and that they had lost their lives doing this. <laughs> he had another friend who, who wrote about what happened to him, and that's what I want us to hear. He said this, These sports, you can be safer than people think, but you just really can make no mistakes at all. A single mistake, that can be the end of everything. Hello? That's not particularly profound when you think about it. But what it reminds me of is this. 
that sin, whether we want to call it a mistake or not. But what we're told over and over again in the scriptures is that sin leads to death. And sin separates us from the life of God. Some people choose to continue to live with that risk, to live in a life of sin. Taking those risks and not thinking that the end will come for them. But it will. John, in this simple letter, this amazing letter, also a very profound letter, has been writing throughout, but building up to this place where he wants us to understand that we can be sure that we have eternal life. But that life is in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we need to put our faith and our trust in Him. So in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12, it says, Yet to all received Him. To those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And also, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, we're reminded of these words, Salvation is found in no one else. Not in ourselves, no other religious practice. Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that by believing in Him, we have the promise of eternal life. Now, this is not a very good graphic, but, but it does nevertheless help us to visualize what I want to remind us of today, that what we've been talking about is that God extends mercy and grace to us, but He extends it in one way. And that is by having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's kind of like crossing over the, that, that fiery pit. Um, but, but we have to trust that what Jesus did on the cross is sufficient for us. There's only one way, though, and that is through Christ and through Christ alone. I want to ask you a couple of questions. <clears throat> and, and please take this seriously. I, I hope you will answer this honestly, not... I'm not going to embarrass you today. You don't have to answer to me. But, but here's the question, the first one. Are you sure that you have eternal life? Now, are you sure you have it? Can you say with absolute certainty that you have eternal life? No, no, no qualifications. Don't, I'm not talking about, well, I hope so. I hope I have eternal life. We're not talking about, well, I, I'm thankful for Jesus, but I hope I've done enough to make up for the things I've done wrong. That's not certainty. But could you answer the question, are you sure you have eternal life? But the next question is, what, what if you say you have eternal life, what is the basis upon which you make that claim? Why are you sure? Because there's only one way of being certain. And that's through trusting in Jesus Christ and He alone. One other question. Actually, it's a statement. If you're not sure, you can be right now. Not on the basis of who I am as your pastor or a pastor in the United Methodist Church, but on the basis of what God promises us in Jesus Christ. If you're not sure, you can be right now. I know Jerome is going to be working his way up here shortly, I think. There he comes. He stood up while I mentioned his name. And he's going to be leading us in a song, Michael too, apparently. Thank you. I didn't know you were coming. Glad you're here too, Michael. Theology discussion. Though. Okay. Well, anyway. Good. Well, well, sing the theology here too. But, but here's the question, folks. Are, are you sure? And if you're not sure... This is an opportunity to do so. Not for me, 
you know, this, this is not about Ron Hipwell. This is about your relationship with God and your certainty. And so when we pray in just a couple of moments, I want to lead us in prayer. But, but it's possible that there's someone here today who is not sure. But you can be because what Jesus Christ did was sufficient for even you. And who he is is capable of saving you. So as we, uh, we, we hear the song that's going to be sung, um, but first of all, I want to lead you in prayer and give you that opportunity that I said you'd have to respond to these truths. And they are truths that God word, God's word makes known to us. Let's pray together. Lord, we don't have words adequate for expressing to you our gratitude. So we sing them and we give you praise. Indeed, your grace is amazing. Your love is wonderful. You've done for us what we could not do for ourselves. We thank you for the promise of this word that you gave and continue to give eternal life and that that life is in your son. And those who have your son have that life. And those who do not have your son do not have life. But thank you that we can know for sure for those of us who believe in the name of the Son of God, that we may have life evermore. So I just encourage you to keep your eyes closed, your heads bowed. And again, this is not for me. This is not because it's my next to last Sunday. But it's because the truth of God's word, if you're here today and you're not sure you have eternal life, but you want to be sure, I just want to ask you to raise your hand long enough that I can pray for you, and I'm going to lead us all in a prayer um, a little more. <clears throat> but just want to ask you that, you know, if you, you're not sure, you want to be sure. It's not on the basis of raising your hand, but we want to pray for you. We want you to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right now and have this promise of what God gives made real for you. So are there people who are not sure, but you just want to say, Ron, pray for me. I want to be sure. I want to trust in this gift that God makes available to us. Are there any here today? Yes. Anyone else? All right. Well, let's, let's pray together. Lord, it's on the guarantee of your promise that we stand today. So, Lord, for those who have raised their hand this morning, we want to just pray uh, in our hearts in this way. Lord, thank you. I, I ask you to come into my life. I trust in you, Lord Jesus, that what you did was for me, even me. Come in and make me a new person. I want to live in the confidence of eternal life and gratitude for who you are and what you've done for me. I give you myself, and we give you ourselves, Lord, with gratitude today. In the name of Jesus, amen. We have many uh, concerns today for prayer, and as Michael and Jerome lead us, so please join in in singing, but if you all, the altar railing is available. If you want to come and pray, I'd be happy to meet with you, or you can pray on your own. Jerome. Scared to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. That He takes and be. Christ, I gave me this iron, and in my heart I find a need. 
of him to be my savior that he will leave his place on high and come for sinful men to die you count it strange so once did i before i knew my savior my savior loves my savior lives my savior's always there for me my god he was my god he is my god he's always gonna be my savior loves my savior lives my savior's always there for me my god he was my god he is my god he's always gonna be Yes, living, dying, let me bring My strength, my solace from this spring That he who lives to be my king Wants I to be my savior That he would leave his place on high him come for sinful men to die you count it strange so once did i before i knew my savior my savior loves my savior lives my savior's always there for me my god he was my god he is my god he's always gonna be my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me, my God he was, my God he is, my God he's always gonna be. Our dear gracious God, thank you that you are eternal. We thank you for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, your unfailing love, and for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you that through your gracious offer, we have this hope of eternity with you. So be it. <laughs> 